So President Emeritus Uhuru Kenyatta handed over two instruments of power, the Constitution and the sword. And by the way, Mr. Ruto is my good friend. When President Ruto received the Constitution, he symbolically put it aside. When he received the sword, he showed it to the nation. I just hope it is not symbolic. I wish he had lifted the constitution yeah. up to show the nation to show the nation that's the rule of law uh-huh not the rule of the sword <laughs> only you would think of something like but I now in this analysis i want to demonstrate to you clearly and at the end of the video you are going to agree with me perfectly well why i strongly believe that um okia mutata right now as things stand he is better placed to be fronted by the gen z movement to be the president in 2027. But then we have a but, okay? <laughs> there is a caution that we are making there. Omtata, we've had Kenyans, you coming on stage. You've seen Kenyans calling your name. The reception was lovely, amazing. It's being historic, you know? And then they are chanting your name. They're saying, Omtata the sixth. Well, that is the, the, that democratic right, but it's not a walk in the park. If we have to go, if I have to go for the president, I'm a politician and I don't rule anything out. If I go for the presidency, it must be very, very, it must be a, a candidate which is very, very well uh, managed and one that has got clear deliverables. I don't want to be part of a failure. And it must not be about me. It must be about Kenya and how do we get our country back. And there must, there must be a proper vehicle for delivering this country, and if it comes out that I'm the best driver for that vehicle, so be it. But if there's a better driver than me, I, will, I see the ground that better driver. But it must not be about individuals. It must be about changing this country. And if, there, if there's a proper, if there's a proper organisation, then uh, there are many people who can become president in this country. Let us not reduce it to president. Let us reduce it to what needs to be done. And what needs to be done is to implement the constitution of Kenya, nothing else, the rule of law. It's too early, it's too early for you maybe to consider maybe. No, 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 it's not too early. I'm just saying, the moment is here, but let us work on a vehicle that can go so that it's not about another personality cult. It should be about the people moving across the, board, the, the threshold of bad leadership actually in a new era of good leadership you know there are two different sides to what is happening right now number one right now it is very easy for you to come on board and be fronted by gen z's and you get the full backing of the gen z's the moment they agree that this is the leader that we want to back and it can be formidable the moment they show solidarity behind you so that is one thing the other thing is that once they have fronted you are you able to be the president of Kenya? And that one we will now be talking of the ballot for 2027. As a matter of fact, you know, when you read 2027, Gen Z must have a leader. Right now, we do not have a leader. They do not have a leader. But in 2027, they must have a leader for their voice to reason on the ballot. What we are seeing right now happening, the change that they brought on board, the revolution that they brought on board is under activism. It is activism, which is good. But when you reach 2027, they will have to rally behind a leader. So the conversation which is happening right now about Okia Mutata is that, first of all, he's better placed to be fronted by the Gen Z's because he is of the same feather as Gen Z's. What Gen Z's did is activism. What Okia Mutata has been doing is activism. So they flock together. They can reason together. <laughs> And so any person who is coming on board to say okay Amrata is better placed, they are very much right that okay Amrata is better placed. Now when you talk of making the other step of becoming the president, 
is it possible for okay on data that is where i have the bat and that is what i want to discuss with you shortly and then we call it a time in the next few minutes ladies and gentlemen now first of all let me just give you a preamble of what is always happening in the political angle you see when you go to the historical backgrounds of great activists in time okay from many nations especially those ones that history has always recorded you will find one common denominator to them that they did not actually end up being you know occupants of the top office in other words history has always recorded them as remaining activists challenging the government of the day and setting the pace that if a serious government is supposed to reason with them then the nation will see betterment so president emeritus uhuru kenyatta handed over two instruments of power the constitution and the sword and by the way, Mr. Ruto is my good friend. When President Ruto received the constitution, he symbolically put it aside. When he received the sword, he showed it to the nation. I just hope it is not symbolic. I wish he had lifted the constitution yeah. up. To show the nation. To show the nation that's the rule of law. Uh -huh. Not the rule of the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would think of something like that. So great activists have always remained great activists. In our nation, we have been talking about Raila Odinga over time. In fact, the failures that Raila Odinga has been seeing, or if you, if you don't want to use the word failure, the aspect of him being denied the opportunity to serve is for him to remain an activist, for him to remain a champion for whatever people want to see, at every time that we have a new regime in place. That is the reason why Raila Odinga has always been dubbed as the greatest opposition leader of all time. Opposition is also in line with activism because you will not be in harmony with the government all time. In fact, we are not supposed to be in harmony with the government. And that is the same thing that activists always do. And that is the same thing that Okia Mutata has been doing. So if you go with that kind of theoretical aspect and background, which is actually shaping uh, the political narrative and it is the true thing on the ground i think we may we might have a bat for okia umtata that of course yes he's a voice of reason all time is a voice of reason okay he's been coming on board and unearthing things for us or challenging you know very retrogressive and punitive actions that the current regime is taking and then the previous regime and all the time that he has been actively involved in championing for the right of the people yes he has been doing that that is being categorized under voice of reasoning. You see what Jimmy Wanjigi is now doing. And one time when Jimmy Wanjigi was being interviewed, he said very well that he knows his space. He cannot be the president, but he can be the voice of reason. In other words, he can be the kingmaker. So kingmaker in him entails a lot. First of all, he can, you know, support somebody to be what, you know, he believes in for the governing of the country. When Okio Mutata is now on this side with the Gen Z, is the voice of reason that is standing with what Gen Z's want, that is standing with what the country want. Can he translate this voice of reasoning to the other side and him being accepted and be embraced in totality and become the president? That is where we have a but. If you look at the criterion that is always being used for you to make a step ahead, be the president, two challenges that we'll definitely face, okay, Omtata, and these challenges are very much usual with what we have always been seeing. In 2027, we are going to see a difference in the way people vote. That is true. We are going to see the democracy of the people coming on board to speak. That is true. We are going to see the will of the people coming on board to express itself. That is true. But when you look at a presidential candidate, there are determinants. However much you are popular, there are determinants to it. And these determinants are secretive. If you listen to one of the interviews that Jimmy Wanjigi um, had with Dr. Kimori, okay, the Wicked Edition, I think so. There is a note that Jimmy Wanjigi once uh, gave. And when you talk of the likes of Jimmy Wanjigi, you'll see you also bring him to the calibers of okay, Omtata. He is in the same feather as well, okay? Because Jimmy Wanjigi has always been a voice of reason. So Jimmy Wanjigi noted that um, however much somebody is popular, there is a kingmaker. So Jimmy Wanjigi said that however popular a person is, there are other determinants that are supposed to fashion you to become the president. And so he was trying to 
argue in the line of deep state thing, but for him he called he called it king making. So king making, he did not go into the aspect of you know deep state coming on board and saying he must just be. But for Jimmy Wajigi was trying to craft it in a way to come out that a kingmaker would stand with you, support you publicly, support you when people are seeing that, okay, this man is better now placed. They can front you, they can release all their financial muscles behind you such that you get a leeway and penetrate. And one of the challenges that I'm seeing with Okia Mutata, do you think Okia Mutata can be fronted well enough and to be sold to the kingmakers in the context that Jimmy Wanjiki was trying to say? Because we know for sure right now that Okia Mutata has no financial muscle to make him be grounded in political activities for 2027. And as early as now, if he is supposed to start, he will need to do a lot. He will need to go extra mile. He will need to go past the Gen Zs. He will need to reach out to the other sectors, to the other participants of the economy, to the other groups. It will not just be a matter of Gen Z's pekeake. He can only trust Gen Z to stand with him on the ballot. But when you talk of him being fashioned, being well oiled to go for the seat, he will go past the Gen Z's. And that is a question. And this question is a question that is proving one challenge that might face Okio Mutata. Is he viable to be presented and be fashioned by the kingmakers? And then number two, is Okia Mutata able to go past what the history has always dubbed activists? Very important, ladies and gentlemen. Once an activist crosses over, you must be well assured that something must change in him or must change about them. Let me give you a very, you know, good example. Like what we saw in Jicho Pevu. You remember Jicho Pevu? You know, Jichopevu, before he went into politics seriously well, what was he? He was a whistleblower of all time. A very, very serious, you know, whistleblower who was actually telling the people the ill deeds and very secretive information, especially when something wrong had happened. By that time, Jichopevu was the darling of everybody. The moment he crossed over and jumped into political board, everything changed. The color changed everything. The, the habit chain he is never a whistleblower. In fact, he is now pampering the side that he is supporting. So the moment an activist crosses over, there must be something that is changing in them. They can never remain to be activists. You can't be the president and at the same time, you are an activist. And that is the reason why history has always recorded that activists used to remain activists for them to challenge the government. If we take our activists now to governance, we are going to be doomed. And later, we might be coming to again saying, we wish we knew. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you think from that side, from that perspective. Tell me what you have. Tell me what you see on that. I really needed to talk about that slightly. I know you have your version. I know you have a better um, aspect to it. Maybe show me and then we'll catch up later. Have a great time.